Hi, I'm keyboardist Dave Stewart. I'm here with my partner Barbara Gaskin and our guitarist Baron Matthews. We're going to talk about um, Stuart Gaskin songs dating back to 1980. We've recorded over 100 songs. And we're going to start off talking about some early tracks we did. So the very first track we did, Barb, you'll remember, was... This is Human Speech. Yeah, so you, um, you'd you written this track and you asked me to come and sing it. And I think we had several goes at it, actually. I find it interesting now listening to that track because it has very much the sounds of 1980s technology in it. I really like it, actually. Compared to what we do now, it seems much simpler, but it has a certain kind of rawness, which I really enjoy. Yeah, it was very experimental in nature and um, it was a significant track for me because the first thing I did with multi-track synths in a proper studio with Nick Bradford engineering. So I, we'd already kind of rehearsed it as a live band with a bass player and drummer, but it didn't really work out. So we went in the studio, laid down a click track and just basically sprayed on a lot of synths and I didn't really know how they all fit together. I wasn't thinking about arrangement, but... Nick, the engineer, really sorted it out and made it sound great. And I, I was, came out of the studio feeling really, really good about it. Your vocal was, um, I've not heard you sing like that before, actually. It was quite um, sort of uh, punky, wasn't it? Yes. The thing was, that it was very much of the kind of punky era. And I had already been in a band with some other women where we sung in that style. Uh, so that it wasn't, it wasn't a new thing for me, but it was probably a new thing in relation to what I'd recorded with you before, which had been mainly um, rather sophisticated harmonies and often with two other singers, actually. This was my first solo work, I think, with you. Mm. And because because the the character of the backing sounds were very, well, they're kind of like synthetic and technological, it needed a bit of welly in the, in the delivery of it. It just came naturally, really, yeah. to me. Yeah. To do it in that style. I thought it's what the song required. Yeah. And also it the, the, the meaning of the words, which is always of paramount importance to me when I'm singing a song. And that's what it needed. That's the treatment it needed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, um, I I was really proud of it. And I um I took it around a few record companies and they said it was uncommercial. And they were quite right, it was uncommercial. But not long after that I took round It's My Party and they said that was uncommercial <laughs> as well. So, yeah, well, you know, that their judgment is perfect, as we know. So moving on a bit. So, you know, we had our unexpected success with It's My Party and we were both as surprised as, as each other. Um, we had to do Top of the Pops. Do you remember that? Of course I do. Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, I remember it very well. How could I forget? Yes. It was a surprise, I think, for yeah. both of us. Although I suppose you'd done it already with, with the Colin song. But for me, well, I was just really pleased. Yeah. Um, it, somewhat bemused yeah yeah so anyway it's my party it was unexpected hit we were really pleased and surprised and we needed a b-side before it could be released so i hurriedly knocked up another song um for you to sing and which is waiting in the wings waiting in the wings Expectation that holds us close. After all, the shoutings died away. There must be something left for us to say. You face the crowd alone. Your 
that song actually uh, but I, the bit I particularly like is your solo in the middle of it and when the when the single was actually pressed and we could put it on our turntables that's why I, I, I took the needle and repeated it because I love the way the solo starts on that it's incredibly exciting yeah <laughs> Great. It's a good moment, isn't it? Mm, it is. It's waiting in the wings. So that was our first Stuart Gaskin B-side. Um, yeah. And then after the success of It's My Party, we had a little bit of money and obviously we had to record more tracks. So we decamped to Trident Studios in Soho. And one of the ones we did was The Emperor's New Guitar. This was um, an important track for our relationship with Baron, which I'll now mm. bring Baron mm. in yeah. on this. That's right. Hello, Baron. This is Clem Fandango. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I hear you, Clem Fandango. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Excellent. <laughs> so Barb and I were talking about um, when you and I first met. Yes. I think it was probably met you in the flesh around about 2015. Yes. We met in a boozer in the Cornish town where you live. And as I remember, I gave you a CD. Yes, yes. And surprisingly, you um, expressed interest in some of the music on the CD, which I wasn't expecting. And um, the track you picked out was... Oh, Emperor's New Guitar, of course. So you said um, you said you've been like playing along with it. So I said, "Oh, great, cool." So I'll come over to your studio and I'll show you how it goes. So I thought what would happen is when yes. I got when I got there, you'd be playing it all wrong, you know. I assumed, um, <laughs> but much to my amazement, you, you were playing it perfectly, and you also played <laughs> bits you weren't supposed to play, like keyboard lead lines and stuff like that. <laughs> so I thought, yes, I thought, yes, I wasn't very discerning there. Ah. I just, uh, Played, played everything I thought would be fun to play. Yeah. Left no space for anyone else. So very <laughs> impressed, very impressed. I just remember that when, when I went to pick Dave up from the station after he'd been over to, to see Baron and they'd played through Empress New Guitar, I said, how did it go? And Dave said, it's amazing. He just played all the parts perfectly and the keyboard parts on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought this is this is really clever. This is great, and he really liked it. So yeah. that's how our working together began, really, because it was uh, 
just enjoying it. And yeah. it was very, very, very good. Moving ahead, uh, just going to wrap it up with a song that um, exposed us in America to a lot of listeners uh, very effectively. Uh, it's called Henry and James. Yeah, Henry and James, yeah. Again, it was a situation where we needed a B-side in a hurry. And mm. I, so I wrote Henry and James in an afternoon using this um, Roland MSQ700 sequencer, which had this um, step time facility on it. And luckily came out with a sequence more or less by accident for the chorus in the middle eight. It sounded great, played in step time. And then we went off to Spacewood to record it. And then you used Yeah, to we did. Yeah. I, and I, I remember that journey because actually we did the B-sides in usually in quite a hurry because we'd spent a long time on A-sides. And I can remember that you taught me the, the melody of that song in the car as we drove up. <laughs> Yeah. I remember learning yeah. it line by line. So by the time we got to the studio, I knew it. Yeah, I was sitting there uh, in, the, uh, <laughs> in the passenger seat of your green yeah. BW, stamping That's my right. foot. So, yeah. right, right, it goes like this, three, yeah. four, stamp, stamp, Henry. And you're saying, like you do when I sing, what note is that? Because it's never, <laughs> not, not usually uh, very clear. And Anyway, yeah. by the time we got there, you'd learned it, which is brilliant. Well, I needed to. I don't think he wrote it down. Actually, I think I just did it from memory. Yeah, you did it from memory. Anyway, it it's. I I really like it. I mean, it's. I liked. I like the sort of step time thing of it, the atmosphere of it, and I, it's kind of simple, but not. <laughs> Each dusty corner, no time. 